doesn't matter what you ride. If you're a kook, you're a kook. Simple as that. I don't care what you ride. So whether you're on a bodyboard, shortboard, longboard, stand-up paddle, if you don't know what you're doing, yeah. you're still a kook. Yeah. It doesn't make you cool because you're carrying a shortboard. And that's what's so lame about Orange County now. Is yeah. I used to love Orange County yeah. when I when I started traveling when I was in my teenage years, traveling for competition, and it was so fun because it's actually a real surf culture. Right. And even though quote unquote they didn't like the bodyboarders, surfers didn't like bodyboarders, right. like how skaters didn't like rollerbladers, yeah. right? Or yeah. inline skating, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's called now. Uh -huh. um, I found that if you're good at what you did, regardless if they liked it or not, they had to respect it. Of course. They, it, it doesn't matter. As long as you're good at what you do, that's what's cool. Right. That's what's fun. Like Carrying a board and not knowing how to use it makes you the biggest kook in the world. Right. Right. And being a kook isn't cool. Being <laughs> um, judgmental just because what they're writing doesn't make you cool. It makes you an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And I mean, and for you though, you're like this big Hawaiian guy and everyone's afraid of you of course and who's gonna talk shit to you kind of and let's talk about in in the 80s at pipe when you ruled the lineup and how you know you have a reputation for being a little bit of a hothead and being a, a badass a little bit wow that's the first time i ever heard that <laughs> yeah. well and, uh, you so you beat some people up can yeah. we say yeah, yeah. Well, and this is the thing. What people yeah. don't realize is I've been fighting my whole life because I was a bodyboarder in a surfer-dominated world. Yeah. But I, I wasn't always 6'1", 230 pounds. I graduated high school as a 6'1", 165-pound senior. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you see my pictures in high school, you'll laugh. It's not even like my kids see it and they laugh every time. It's like literally like anorexic all right, in comparison <laughs> to what I am now. And so people forget about that. Yeah. But at that that build and the way, even even you know, when I was in the freshman, sophomore, even in my intermediate years, I always felt that my ability was more than enough to get me the respect. And if I had to literally fight hand-to-hand right. -hand combat to prove that, I had no problems doing that either. And I still don't to this day. Um, and it just so happens now that I'm bigger. But I had the same <laughs> attitude when I was younger. You can talk to guys who know me from right. high school and, and even younger. They're gonna say, he's the same guy. And uh, regardless if I'm bigger, smaller, um, it, I still have the same attitude that, hey, I go out there to earn my, my respect and I've earned it. And if you want to disrespect that, then I have an issue with it. I, I will fight. I fight all the time for what I believe in. Right. You know, whether it's in the water, <laughs> whether, it it's, <laughs> whether it's like, you know, against GMOs or the Mauna Kea stuff, all that stuff going on. I stand up for what I believe in, period. It doesn't matter that I'm big or small. Right. There's a, a misunderstanding or a misnomer out there like that I'm the one that goes on and starts trouble. The last no. thing I want to do is fight. I don't like fighting. Yeah. I prefer not to fight. I prefer out to go out and have the time of my life every single time. You know, it's just I get into a fight because somebody drops in on me. I get into a fight because somebody's surfing in a contest when they're not supposed to be. Right. And I don't mind being tagged and the, the bad guy. And the video gets on YouTube and now everybody knows, yeah. right? <laughs> well, and, and I don't mind being labeled the bad guy if I got to yeah. be that to save people's lives. And, you know, especially during a competition, what happens is that's people's livelihood as well as their lives at stake. You're surfing six to eight, 10 foot, 15 foot pipeline. That's life danger. I mean, life threatening. You know, I lost a friend, um, you know, uh, years back from what? Well, it's coming up on 10 years. A friend of mine, Malik, surfed 30 foot chopo. And he God. went and surfed a six to eight foot day, which is the same size as the contest, which the video most people are talking about. And he died without anybody in his way. So imagine how much higher the risk is of getting injured or dying or drowning when somebody is in the way who's not supposed to be there. Right, right. You know, also I have uh, another, that guy Leo Fioveranti from it Italy broke his back at the back, at the pipe contest, the pipe masters. Right. And then a friend of mine, Tamayo, because a guy didn't know what he was doing and didn't know how to he surf pipeline, didn't, well actually, current. what shouldn't have been out in the lineup in the first place mm -hmm. and didn't know what to do and he straightened out and he literally scalped him. He had 50 stitches, um, 50 staples in his head. And so people don't realize, they don't see all of this. I don't fight because I want to fight. I fight because I have to fight. And it's, it's yeah, it's a machismo thing. I'm not going to lie, it's an ego thing. I'm an I'm a athlete, especially an athlete in an individual sport like surfing. You know, you got to be and think that you're the best at what you do and you got to make sure that you stand up to anybody who who wants to test that. So, you know, I love 
talking about pipeline probably because that wave is the gnarliest wave in the world and you're probably one of only a handful of people who know that wave very well you have had very intimate moments with the pipeline uh, most people will i mean i think their ultimate goal as as a surfer is to be able to surf a wave like pipeline but like, as you said it's such a, a crazy wave that if you don't make the wave you're putting your life you know on the line so knowing that all the all the times that you surf pipe you, like does that i mean i i asked you before if if you were scared but have you ever just kind of like gone in <laughs> Like, you got scared and you just was like, I'm going to go in today. Have you ever done that? No. No. no I, the scared, you just have to go. The more scared I get, yeah. the more of a challenge it becomes. Right. So, the only time I actually did that was a day at Chopo. Mm -hmm. when, Which um, is in Tahiti. I started off and I was out bodyboard. I mean, I was out surfing, shortboarding. And this was uh, during the trials, but it, it was a lay day. During the trials for the, 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 the Billabong Chopo Pro. And uh, it started off at like two feet and nothing. So I started off on my shortboard, little 6-0 out there. And then it started building, building really quickly. And then I went in and got my bigger board. And then it started building even quicker than that. And it was bigger, it was like 10 to 15 feet, practically impossible to get in on a surfboard. So I actually went in and grabbed my bodyboard. I went in and grabbed my bodyboard. The first three waves I took off prone and I literally was beyond invert on the drop because the way the wave sucks up right. and every time I hit the bottom my nose actually dug into the water and that was for like three waves in a row and then it became a point where it wasn't even fun anymore it yeah. was just like I, I would take off and like oh shit oh shit oh shit trying to get out of the wave trying to basically save my life and so right when I did that I was like okay I'm over this this makes no sense and uh, the boys started towing and I had to start toe surfing by then